Hey guys, John from FlatMikeAlpha.com, and today we're going to be going over airport diagrams. So what exactly are they, how do we want to use them, and what does all this symbology mean on our airport diagrams? So for starters, we're going to start off with a fairly basic airport diagram. We're going to use Punta Gorda Airport, KPGD, in Punta Gorda, Florida. And we'll just start from the top here before we get into the meaty part on down here. So obviously, it tells you the city and the airport it's for. It tells you it's an airport diagram. That's good. And it's got an ASOS frequency. Um, they also use that as the ATIS frequency there. Punta Gorda Control Tower with a star. It's a part-time control tower. The rest of the time, it's a uh, CTAF frequency on 121.0. Ground control frequency, clearance delivery frequency, and the clearance delivery frequency, when the tower is closed, that relays over to Fort Myers approach. So it's actually really handy. This airport diagram can be a great thing to have pulled up prior to getting in the airplane, or especially when you're taxing around, either taxing to take off or taxing after you've landed. It has all your frequencies right on here. So how are we going to use this? Um, as far as when we're taxing out, well, we're going to figure out where we are, the FBO, and before we ever get in the airplane, we're going to go ahead and kind of brief ourselves what we're going to do. So if we know the winds are out of the northeast and we're going to be using runway four, we could simply just tell ourselves, hey, we're going to go from the FBO and we're going to take delta over to runway four and hold short. If the winds are, say, out of the southwest, you might be doing something like, hey, we're going to go from the FBO and take delta to Charlie, hold short of 1533, and then cross 1533, Charlie Alpha, to runway 22, and we can take off heading southwest. So you want to have an idea of what to expect from ATC before you get in the airplane. Not to say that that's exactly what they're going to give you, but have a good idea of what to expect and if you're going to be crossing any runways. And then, of course, as you're taxing, have this out. And if you go ahead and print this before your flight, or maybe you have it on the iPad, you can actually kind of draw on there exactly what sort of taxi route they give you and circle or denote any hold short instructions. Now, a few parts of this taxi or this airport diagram here. We've got a little star, that's where our tower is, and the star is also where the beacon is. The beacon for Punta Gorda happens to be right on top of the tower, so that's why the star is there, co-located with the tower, and the 147 is just the altitude of the tower, so it's 147 feet uh, MSL. So that gives you an idea of what um, altitude you'd have to be at to clear it, you know, just for obstacle avoidance. Uh, we also have on here magnetic variation at the airport, 5.5 degrees west, and the annual rate of change. Um, as of January 2015, it was 0.1 degree west pretty much every year. Uh, we have field elevation, 26 feet. That's the elevation of the field. And then we have the elevation of our touchdown zones. So 23 feet for runway 4, 23 feet for runway 33, 19 feet for runway 15. So slightly different elevation, just a slight slope up um, on that runway. We also have... 154.7, that's the actual heading of runway 15, 154 degrees, so pretty darn close um, to 155 degrees, uh, and of course they just round it, and they get runway 15, 150, even though it's not 150, it's 154.7, but they just round it to the closest uh, number. Now, sometimes you'll even see 156 be runway 15 just because they haven't had time to go out and paint the numbers. And, of course, this 154.7 number changes at that annual rate uh, because the poles do move on the Earth. The magnetic poles do move. So, next, coming down here, we want to talk about a non-movement area. Now, a non-movement area might sound like an area you don't move, but it actually just means it's not controlled by ATC. So, a non-movement area is actually going to be this ramp area here. And we can actually look at the satellite photo and see that there's this little dashed line that denotes the ramp area from the taxiway area. So taxiways are movement areas, so are runways, and they're controlled by ATC. But non-movement areas, we could taxi around. So we could go from the FBO and taxi around this away over to the fuel pumps without having to talk to ground control. Now, if you're ever in doubt, certainly just give them a call. And sometimes it's still good to call them even on non-movement areas just because they can warn you about other aircraft that might be entering the ramp to watch out for. So those are the basics of our airport diagram and what we're looking at here. One other thing I want to point out to you is you may wonder Alpha and Alpha 2 and what that's all about. Typically, these little connecting taxiways 
if they don't happen to run into another longer taxiway like Charlie does here, you're going to get an Alpha 2 named for this little connecting taxiway between the runway and taxiway Alpha. And we'll take a look at another airport diagram here with some more examples of that. So here on the Sarasota airport diagram, we have multiple examples of taxiway Alpha and all these little short connecting taxiways here, these little short joiners being Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Alpha 4. And you'll notice that where it actually touches the runway, Alpha 1, it's not Alpha 0, it's just Alpha. So it can be kind of confusing if you're taxiing from the FBO and you're told taxi runway 14 via Alpha, then you want to go ahead and join Alpha and go all the way down, all the way to runway 14. If you're told taxi runway 14 via Alpha Alpha 2, then they're expecting you to turn here and do an intersection departure from Alpha 2. Now a few new symbols we have on here. We have a hotspot, and that's simply HS1, hotspot 1, letting us know, hey, we have a hotspot here, and we could actually look up in the chart supplement and find out what all that's about. What it's going to tell us is, hey, there's a lot of intersecting taxiways and runways, so just be really careful. Make sure you're turning onto the right thing. It's really easy for guys to land on runway 32 and be told right on Delta and actually make a right turn onto runway 224 instead of actually continuing and making the right turn onto Delta. So that's a really common mistake guys make. So hotspots are just areas that they circle on the airport diagram to warn you about, hey, lots of other guys have made mistakes here. Try not to let yourself make mistakes there as well. Um, here's a slightly different uh, depiction of the tower. We have the tower over there. We have the rotating beacon over here. So our star is the rotating beacon and the little square there with tower or TWR is where the tower is located, 135 feet tall. Now we have some taxiways here that are kind of hashed out with these little checker mark patterns. And what that means, we have a little key here, it says non-movement area. Like we talked about before, non-movement areas are areas that ATC doesn't control. So actually you could taxi from this FBO onto Foxtrot, Foxtrot all the way over here without ever turning on your radio and then turn it on call up ground control and be like, hey, I'm at Foxtrot holding short of Charlie and I want to go VFR southbound. And they would give you the whole spiel of what you need to do to depart. Now, that's not really a great idea because they could easily have just had somebody land, turn left on Foxtrot and be heading into the ramp that way. So it's a really good idea when you're at the FBO ramp to actually call up ground control at that point rather than just taxiing around here, but technically you don't actually need a clearance to taxi around non-movement areas. Now obviously you can't get to a runway without talking to them because the non-movement area ends before you actually get to a uh, taxiway that joins your runway. These regular old taxiways that aren't shaded, those you actually have to contact ground control to taxi on. But suppose you want to just taxi out here and reposition your aircraft over to that hangar, you wouldn't have to contact ground control to do so. So it's kind of a helpful thing to use, but again, whenever in doubt, just call them up. They're usually not that busy, and they can often help you, A, avoid a violation, and B, avoid just getting into a traffic jam where you're nose-to-nose -nose with another airplane, and you both can't go anywhere. So other helpful things on this particular airport diagram, we have over here these little ovals. What those little ovals are, that actually denotes a displaced threshold. So it's displaced threshold for landing on 3-2 and displaced threshold for landing on 1-4. And that's actually the start of your landing distance. 9,500 feet is the length of the runway, but we have declared distances that are much shorter because of the uh, dis displaced threshold. So you don't actually have a full 9,500 feet available for landing. And these are the dimensions of the runway, 9,500 feet by 150 feet wide. Runway 422 is 5,009 feet long by 150 feet wide. And with no displaced thresholds there, we should have the entire amount available for landing. And presumably we're gonna be touching down 1,000 feet down the runway, which would give us about 4,000 feet left to roll out. Should be plenty of room for most of our GA aircraft. Now also on this airport diagram, we actually have a little self-serve gas pump depicted up there, so that's kind of handy. If they tell you taxi the gas pumps on the north side of the airport, you know where they are. We also have land and hold short depicted on here because it's often uh, that you're going to get a clearance to land runway 14, hold short of 422, and that depicts exactly where they're expecting you to hold short, so you have a rough idea. Now, if you wanted to figure out how much distance that gives you between the displaced threshold and holding short of that line there, well, the chart supplement has that answer, the old airport facility directory, or 
Even easier, when you're in the air and tower tells you that, I would just keep the mic and be like, well, hey, how much room do I got to land there? And they'll tell you exactly how much, and that's a lot easier than trying to flip through your iPad or open up a book while you're trying to fly your airplane on downwind and decide whether or not you can actually accept that clearance. Lastly, the last little thing we'll talk about here on the airport diagrams for our basic intro to airport diagrams here is these little lines here. These are actually latitude longitude lines, and that can give you a good idea of what your coordinates are to find the airport or where you're at in the airport. Maybe you want to check your GPS and you're parked over at the FBO and you want to make sure your GPS has the proper position and so you want to confirm the coordinates are correct. Well, 27 uh, degrees 24 minutes north and 82 degrees 33 minutes west and just slightly above that, so just slightly north of those coordinates, that should be what your GPS is reading when you're on the ramp over at the FBO. So just kind of a little neat little thing. That's why they got these lines running through there. Those are just latitude and longitude lines. Now, bonus question for anyone who knows it, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. What does all this stuff right here mean? That's a bunch of interesting information that I have no idea. What could it possibly be talking about? So if you think you know, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. And uh, well, let's see who the first one is to get it right. Uh, what do all these little designations here mean about runway 422 and runway 1432? So hopefully that you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions about this stuff at all, of course, just leave it in the comments below. Let us know what you think this means here. And make sure you give us a thumbs up on our video. Subscribe to our channel to keep up with our latest videos. Make sure you check out our Patreon page. We really appreciate all the support you guys give us. Really helps keep this project going. We're trying to make a totally free online ground school for everyone. So please check it out and support us any way you can. We greatly appreciate it. As always, if you can't fly every day, then fly at mikealpha.com. We will see you all next time.